ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम साइरा मुजतबा एंड विद मी इज सुभद्रा रामचंद्रन द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी टू शेयर हिज थॉट्स इन मन की बात प्रोग्राम एट 11 ए एम टूडे नेशन वाइड कोविड नाइन्टीन वैक्सीनेशन ड्राइव टू बी एक्सपैंडेड फ्रॉम टूमोरो टू कवर वनरेबल एज ग्रुप प्राइवेट सेक्टर पार्टिसिपेशन स्केल्ड अप इन दी इनोक्यूलेशन ड्राइव वैक्सीनेशन विल बी फ्री एट गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल कॉस्ट ऑफ कोविड वैक्सीनेशन कैप्ड एट टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी रुपीज पर पर्सन पर डोज फॉर प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल फंक्शनिंग एज कोविड वैक्सीनेशन सेंटर्स पर्सन विद एनी ऑफ द ट्वेंटी को मोबिलिटीज इंक्लूडिंग हार्ट फेलियर विद हॉस्पिटल एडमिशन इन पास्ट वन ईयर ट्रांसप्लांट रेसिपियंट्स एंड दोज विद एंड स्टेज किडनी डिजीज विल बी प्रायोरिटाइज फॉर कोविड वैक्सीनेशन कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी आस्क स्टेट्स एंड यूनियन टेरिटरीज नॉट टू लोअर गार्ड enforce covid appropriate behavior and deal firmly with violations education minister ramesh pokhrial nishank stresses on the need for reforms in the education sector national science day being observed today isro to launch 19 satellites including amazonia 1 of brazil into space this morning khadi and village industry commission's e market portal registers over 1 crore turnover in 8 months in boxing Deepak Kumar wins silver in the 52 kg category at Tanya Memorial Tournament in Bulgaria. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. and now the news in detail prime minister narendra modi will share his thoughts with the people in the country and abroad in the mann ki baat program on all india radio at 11 am today it will be the 74th episode of the monthly radio program it will be broadcast on the entire network of air and doordarshan and also on air news website www.newsonair.com and news on air mobile app It will also be streamed live on the YouTube channels of AIR, DD News, PMO and Information and Broadcasting Ministry. AIR will broadcast the program in regional languages immediately after the Hindi broadcast. The regional language versions will be repeated at 8 in the evening. The nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive is all set to be expanded from tomorrow to cover vulnerable age groups which will include people above 60 years of age and those over 45 years with comorbidities. The vaccination program was launched on 16th of January covering over 1 crore healthcare and frontline workers. The Union Health Ministry has said the facility of on-site registrations will be available so that eligible beneficiaries can walk into identified covid vaccination centers get themselves registered and get inoculated the participation of private sector has been scaled up in the inoculation drive the vaccine will be administered free of cost at 10000 government hospitals to these groups while the cost of the vaccine at around 20000 private vaccination centers will be borne by the people private hospitals can charge up to 250 rupees per dose for covid-19 vaccine during the vaccination drive the health ministry has said the states have been given freedom to use all private hospitals empaneled under state government health insurance schemes as covid vaccination centers the states can also use health facilities of all psus and all government health facilities as covid vaccination centers Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan interacted with health secretaries and mission directors of National Health Mission of States and Union Territories through a video conference on the vaccination of age appropriate groups. During the meeting, the states were explained about the three methods of registration which are advanced self registration, on-site registration and facilitated cohort registration. The states have been explained that the private hospitals functioning as covid vaccination centers can charge subject to a ceiling of 250 rupees per person per dose along with the electronic and financial management mechanism usernames and passwords to be provided to the private facilities to facilitate effective use of covid 2.0 were also discussed during the meeting 
In addition, the states were explained about mapping of private facilities with the nearest cold chain points to ensure seamless flow of vaccines. What we have suggested to the state is that all government health facilities can be used as COVID vaccination centers. They could be medical college hospitals, district hospitals, subdivisional hospitals, CHCs, PHCs, health sub centers and health and wellness centers. So again, the choice is with the states. Depending on the demand and their requirement, they must, over a period of time, keep on increasing the number of not only private hospitals, but also government hospitals. During the meeting, the simplified system of certifying people with 20 comorbidities within the 45 to 59 years age group was also explained to the states. The simplified one-page certificate will be signed by any registered medical practitioner. The certificate can either be uploaded on COVIN 2.0 by the beneficiary while self-registering or a hard copy can be carried by the beneficiary to the COVID vaccination centers. The government has also released the list containing 20 specified comorbidities that will prioritize individuals for the COVID-19 vaccination. They include heart failure with hospital admission in past one year, post-cardiac transplant, kidney and liver transplant recipient or on wait list, leukemia, lymphoma, HIV infection, diabetes and hypertension on treatment and severe respiratory disease with hospitalization in the last two years. More from our correspondent. To ramp up the COVID vaccination capacity manifold, significantly large number of private facilities is being involved. Around 10,000 private hospitals impaneled under Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Aarogya Yojana, PMJAY, over 600 hospitals impaneled under CGHS, and other private hospitals impaneled under state government health insurance schemes can participate as COVID vaccination centers. Health departments of state governments have already initiated dialogue with these private hospitals so that they can be encouraged to participate in this drive. Besides, there would be government health facilities like medical college hospitals, district hospitals, sub-divisional hospitals, health sub-centers and health and wellness centers will be used as COVID vaccination centers. Health Ministry has asked all the private health facilities which will serve as government COVID vaccination centers to follow strict norms of due process, quality and safety including integration with the national COVID technology platform. All private health facilities must also have adequate space, cold chain arrangements, number of vaccinators and support staff as well as adequate arrangements for addressing adverse events following immunization. With Divakar Anand Kumar, AIR News, Delhi. Over 1.5 crore people have been administered COVID-19 vaccine in the country so far. Till now, 77% of healthcare and frontline workers have been administered with the first dose of vaccine and 70% have received the second dose. Amid surge in COVID-19 cases in some parts of the country, Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Gauba has asked all states and union territories not to lower their guard, enforce COVID-appropriate behaviour and deal firmly with violations. He reiterated that states need to maintain a continued rigorous vigil in terms of containing the spread and not squander away the gains of the collective hard work of last year. The Cabinet Secretary yesterday held separate review meetings with Chief Secretaries of Maharashtra, Punjab, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Telangana and Jammu and Kashmir. These states and union territories have been reporting a high active case load or an increasing trend in new cases in the last week. During a review meeting, it was strongly stressed that they need to follow effective surveillance strategies in respect of potential super-spreading events. Need for effective testing, comprehensive tracking, prompt isolation of positive cases and quick quarantine of close contacts were also strongly emphasized. The chief secretaries informed about the enforcement of COVID-appropriate behavior by levying heavy fines and chalans. Meanwhile, the country's COVID-19 recovery rate stands at 97.14% with recovery of more than 12,000 people in the past 24 hours. The ministry said more than 1 crore 7 lakh patients have already recovered from this infection. A total of 16,488 new cases were reported in the country in the last 24 hours, taking the cumulative positive cases to over 1 crore 10 lakh. The health ministry said 113 deaths were reported within 24 hours, taking the toll to over 1 lakh 56,000 across the country. In Bihar, the online registration for vaccination of those above 60 or those above 45 years with comorbidities on COVID platform will begin from tomorrow. 
Four members of a family can register on one mobile phone. Meanwhile, the number of active cases is sharply declining in the state. Currently, only 403 patients are receiving treatment at various hospitals. 71 patients recovered, while 45 fresh cases were recorded during the last 24 hours. No positive case has been reported from 21 districts. COVID-19 recovery rate has improved to 99.26% in Bihar. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has said that the coronavirus infection is under control in the state. He said, however, it is necessary to maintain an effective system of prevention and treatment of corona in the state. He said, a little carelessness in this regard can do a big harm. Meanwhile, those people who are coming from the states where high active caseload of COVID-19 has been reported are being tested and put under quarantine. More from our Lucknow correspondent. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has instructed to increase COVID testing to 180,000 tests per day in the state. At the same time, a total of 3 crore 11 lakh 71,541 samples have been tested so far in the state. Meanwhile, the recovery rate from COVID-19 has now increased to 98.2%. So far, 5 lakh 92,556 people have got recovered from COVID-19 in the state. Chief Minister has said that the entire process of vaccination should be conducted in accordance with the guidelines and order of the central government. The targeted groups of COVID vaccination should be informed in advance regarding the date, place and timing of vaccination. So far, the vaccination to 16,64,000 health workers and frontline workers in the state has been completed. MS Yadav, Yaya News, Lucknow. Odisha government has issued fresh COVID-19 guidelines for March 2021. The guidelines reiterate government's trust on basic COVID-19 containment measures like social distancing, face masking and hand sanitizing, along with other do's and don'ts. Talking to AIR News, Niti Aayog member and chairperson of National COVID-19 Task Force, Dr. V.K. Paul said, along with government facilities, private facilities will also be engaged for the comfort of the people. The effort to vaccinate will not only now involve limited number of private facilities that were engaged so far. In addition to the government facilities, we will be now engaging more private facilities. This will increase the speed and the comfort for the citizens to receive COVID-19 vaccination. You must remember that if you are willing to receive vaccination in government facility, it will be all free. If you go to the designated private facilities, you will be paying rupees 250 per dose. Either way, the effort is now to make sure designated groups receive COVID-19 vaccination quickly, safely, and in a very smooth, comfortable manner. Dr. Paul also explained the process of registration for administration of the COVID-19 vaccine. Preparations for this task have already been shaped up very well, and these involve several facets. For instance, our IT backbone, the COVID system, has now been upgraded to COVID 2.0 with ability to self-register on the part of the citizen to be able to walk into the facilities for vaccination and to be available through the health system as a group to make use of the services. In addition, all the cold chain preparations are, have now been further upgraded and now we are in a position to show to the world that we will deliver COVID-19 vaccination program with full success and citizen gets a vaccine without any inconvenience. You are listening to the Morning News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts in Man Ki Baat program at 11 a.m. today. Nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive to be expanded from tomorrow to cover vulnerable age groups. Private sector participation scaled up in the inoculation drive. Vaccination will be free at government hospitals. Cost of COVID vaccination capped at 250 rupees per person per dose for private hospitals functioning as COVID vaccination centers. Persons with any of the 20 comorbidities, including heart failure with hospital admission in the past one year, transplant recipients and those with end-stage kidney disease will be prioritized for COVID vaccination. Cabinet Secretary R. states and Union Territories not to lower guard, enforce COVID-appropriate behavior and deal firmly with violations. 
एजुकेशन मिनिस्टर रमेश पोखरियाल निशंक स्ट्रेसेस ऑन द नीड फॉर रिफॉर्म्स इन द एजुकेशन सेक्टर नेशनल साइंस डे बीइंग ऑब्जर्व टुडे इसरो टू लॉन्च 19 सैटेलाइट्स इंक्लूडिंग एमेजोनिया 1 ऑफ ब्राजील इन टू स्पेस दिस मॉर्निंग खादी एंड विलेज इंडस्ट्री कमीशंस ई मार्केट पोर्टल रजिस्टर्स ओवर 1 करोड़ टर्नओवर इन 8 मंथ्स and in boxing deepak kumar wins silver in the 52 kg category at stranja memorial tournament in bulgaria four quick news updates around the clock follow us on twitter at air news alerts chalo milte ek shuruaat kare chalo ek faisla aaj kare maat nahi Welcome back you're listening to the morning news. Union Education Minister Ramesh Pokhrial Nishank has emphasized on the need for reforms in the education sector. He said that the University of Delhi can further contribute to nation building by advancing center of excellence on national education policy. The minister also said that efforts will not only strengthen the Indian education system but also make the country a global knowledge superpower. Mr Nishank was addressing the 97th annual convocation of the Delhi University yesterday. During the convocation for the first time in the history of the university over 1.78 lakh digital degrees were awarded. National Science Day is being observed today. The day is celebrated every year on 28 February to commemorate the discovery of Raman effect. On this day, physicist C. B. Raman announced the discovery of the Raman effect, for which he awarded the Nobel Prize in 1930. The day is aimed at spreading the message of importance of science and its application in human life. The theme for National Science Day 2021 is Future of Science and Technology and Innovation: Impact on Education, Skills, and Work. A report. With a view to promote science and innovation, the government will present National Science Communication Awards today. These awards are presented every year on this day. It was instituted in 1987 to encourage and recognize outstanding efforts in the area of science and technology and inculcating scientific temper among the masses. The government is implementing several schemes to encourage students and youth of the country towards the field of science and technology the innovation in science pursuit for inspired research is a major scheme in operation to attract motivate nurture and train meritorious students to study science subjects and opt careers in research and development in this year's union budget the center also announced the allocation of 50000 crore rupees over 5 years for the national research foundation to support researchers working across several streams of science and technology divakar ar news delhi Union Health Minister Dr Harshvardhan will attend an event to mark the National Science Day in Imphal this afternoon. The minister reached Manipur yesterday. More from our Imphal correspondent. The Union Minister Dr Harshvardhan who arrived in Imphal yesterday is going to inaugurate major healthcare projects taken up at Vijnan Institute of Medical Science Rems Imphal this morning. These projects include a new 3 Tesla MRI machine in newly constructed MRI block, a 100 bed capacity PG ladies hostel, a new neurosurgery ICU and a new block of College of Nursing. When he arrived at Imphal airport, he was warmly received by the state BJP leaders, MP and state cabinet minister. He also inspected a health and wellness center in Imphal West district yesterday the union minister will leave Imphal this evening for new delhi jj thakshom from imphal for aiir news the indian space research organization isro will launch amazonia 1 satellite of brazil and 18 co passenger satellites through pslv c51 rocket from the satish dhawan space center at shri harikota at 10:25 this morning Amazonia 1 is the optical earth observation satellite of the National Institute for Space Research. The satellite would further strengthen the existing structure by providing remote sensing data to users for monitoring deforestation in the Amazon region and analysis of diversified agriculture across the Brazilian territory. We have a report. All arrangements are in place for the first launch of the year at the Space Center at Sri Harikota. Due to COVID reasons, the coverage of the launch is not open for all media. In this scenario, 
scientists at ISRO are busy conducting last minute preparations for a perfect launch of the satellite. 18 other satellites in the present mission include Satish Dhawan Sat built by Space Kids India and Unity Sat, a combination of three satellites designed and built by three colleges, Sri Shakti Institute of Engineering and Technology Coimbatore, JPR Institute of Technology in Sri Parambadur and GH Raizani College of Engineering in Nagpur. Talking exclusively to AIR, Chairperson of Space Kids India, Dr. Srimadi Kesan said that Indian space industry is set to grow more under the aegis of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. It's going to be a great honor uh, that we want to give to our uh, Honorable Prime Minister who's opened up the privatization, who's made uh, ISRO's facilities open for all the private uh, players and uh, this has been very, very helpful for us in all our testing for the satellite and it has been cost controlled and that is the reason we wanted to give him the highest honor of sending his picture on the top panel of the satellite. PSLV C-51 Amazonia 1 mission is the first dedicated PSLV commercial mission for New Space India Limited, a Government of India company under the Department of Space. Joy, AA News, Chennai. In Tamil Nadu, seat sharing talks between different alliances are going on. The ruling AIADMK has made the alliance pact with the PMK. Speaking to media persons after signing the agreement last evening, Dr. Anbumani said that his party would contest in 23 seats in the AIADMK alliance. IJK, an ally of the DMK, announced that it would leave the alliance and join the third front with Makkal Niti Mayam party, headed by actor-politician Kamal Hassan. Actor politician Sarat Kumar of the All India Samadhuva Makkal Kachi met Kamal Hassan yesterday for alliance talks. Speaking to newspersons, Kamal Hassan said that he will be contesting the elections as a chief ministerial candidate. It may be noted that talks were also held with the Amma Makkal Munetra Karagam, headed by TTV Dina Karan, the nephew of VK Sasikala, the confidant of former chief minister Jay Lalita. BJP is in talks with the AIADMK and is yet to announce the seat-sharing formula. In Gujarat, voting is taking place for elections to 81 municipalities, 31 district panchayats and 231 taluka panchayats began this morning. Polling began at 7 this morning and will continue till 6 p.m. Arantabad correspondent reports by polls to 23 municipalities and 3 taluka panchayats are also being held simultaneously. More from our correspondent. More than 2 crore 50 lakh voters are eligible to cast their vote in today's polling. Out of 2,729 seats across 680 votes of 81 municipalities, 95 seats have been declared unopposed. Thus, polling is being held on 2,625 seats. Out of 980 seats of 31 district panchayats, 25 seats have been declared unopposed. Thus, the polling is being held on 955 seats. Similarly, out of 4,774 seats of 231 Taluka Panchayat, 117 seats have been declared unopposed. Thus, the polling is being held on 4,655 seats. The main fight is between the ruling BJP and the opposition Congress party. However, the Aam Adi Party, BSP and other political parties have also fielded their candidates. Counting of votes will take place on Tuesday. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. In Delhi, the by-elections to five wards of municipal corporation of the city is beginning today. The polling is taking place in Rohini, Shalimar Bagh, Tulopuri, Kalyanpuri and Johan Bangar municipal wards. The voting began at 7.30 in the morning will continue till 5.30 p.m. Khadi and Village Industry Commission's e-market portal has registered a gross turnover of over 1 crore 10 lakh rupees in just 8 months of its launch. Minister for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Nitin Gatkari lauded Khadi's successful e-commerce venture. He said that this portal has provided a wide marketing platform for various Khadi and village industry products to a larger population. Mr. Gatkari said efforts should be made to reach a turnover of 200 crore rupees per year. As per the MSME ministry, Khadi's online sale that started with just Khadi face masks during the COVID-19 lockdown has evolved into a full-fledged e-market platform with nearly 800 products. Online orders have been received from all 31 states and union territories, including the far-flung Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Arunachal Pradesh, Kerala, Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir, among others. 
KVIC Chairman Vinay Kumar Saxena said that this e-portal has given a big push to Swadeshi. He said that while this has provided artisans an additional platform to sell their goods, it has also displayed people's love for Khadi and their resolve to make India Atmanilbhar. In boxing, Deepak Kumar won the silver medal at the 72nd Strania Memorial Tournament at Sofia in Bulgaria after losing to local favourite Daniel Esernov at fiercely contested flyweight final in 52 kilogram category. The Indian had stunned the reigning Olympic and world champion Shukobdin Zorov of Uzbekistan in his final semi-final showdown. The Boxing Federation of India in a tweet praised the Indian boxer. It said the result may not be in favour of Deepak Kumar, but the Indian boxer surely won the hearts with his attacking game. And now let's take a look at the weather update for the day. National capital Delhi witnessed mist this morning. The minimum temperature was around 16 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be 29 degrees. Mumbai will have a mainly clear sky with temperature varying between 21 and 33 degrees Celsius. Chennai will have a partly cloudy sky. Temperature will fluctuate between 21 and 34 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will also have a partly cloudy sky. Minimum temperature was around 23 degrees Celsius, while maximum may go up to 36 degrees. Jammu will have a mainly clear sky. Minimum temperature was around 13 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be around 22 degrees. In Srinagar, there will be partly cloudy sky, becoming generally cloudy towards evening or night. Minimum temperature was around 4 degrees Celsius, while maximum is expected to rise up to 10 degrees. Leh will have a partly cloudy sky. Minimum temperature was minus 4 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be 6 degrees. Gilgit will have a generally cloudy sky. Temperature will hover between 6 and 17 degrees Celsius, while Muzaffarabad will have a partly cloudy sky, becoming generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening. The temperature will vary from 7 to 19 degrees Celsius. In Dehradun, there will be mainly clear sky. City will experience temperature between 13 to 30 degrees Celsius. Chandigarh will have a mainly clear sky. Temperature is likely to hover between 19 and 31 degrees Celsius. In Hyderabad, temperature will hover between 20 and 37 degrees Celsius. The city witnessed mist in the morning. And now an overview of today's newspapers. The next phase of the vaccination drive, hike in petrol and diesel prices, and the Jammu meet of Congress dissenters of some of the prominent stories noticed by the press today. Vaccine at Ru rupees 250 per dose in private hospitals rise the Sunday Tribune, while the Sunday Pioneer reports on the rising number of cases in some states, the headline quoting the center states, enforce COVID appropriate behavior, adding states, UTs told to deal firmly with violations. Petrol got 4.87 rupees per litre dearer in one month. Diesel 4.99 rupees headlines in the Sun Times. Papers are widely noticed the concerns of the group of 23 Congress dissenters who met in Jammu. The Sunday Pioneer writes, Congress getting weak rules G23 while the Hindu reports, Congress drift widens with G23 Jammu meet. The Hindu business line has noticed the PM's remarks on the inauguration of the India Toy Fair. The headline reads, Make toys that are good for ecology, psychology. And finally, adding another feather to its cap, ISRO is all set for its first mission in 2021. The Sunday Tribune writes, ISRO launches Brazilian satellite today. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts in Man Ki Baat program at 11 a.m. today. Nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive to be expanded from tomorrow to cover vulnerable age groups. Private sector participation scaled up in the inoculation drive. Vaccination will be free at government hospitals. Cost of COVID vaccination capped at 250 rupees per person per dose for private hospitals functioning as COVID vaccination centers. Persons with any of the 20 comorbidities, including heart failure with hospital admission in past one year, Transplant recipients and those with end-stage kidney disease will be prioritized for COVID vaccination. Cabinet Secretary asks states and union territories not to lower guard, enforce COVID-appropriate behavior and deal firmly with violations. Education Minister Ramesh Pokhyal Nishank stresses on the need for reforms in the education sector. National Science Day being observed today. ISRO to launch 19 satellites, including Amazonia 1 of Brazil, into space this morning. Khadi and Village Industry Commission's e-market portal registers over 1 crore turnover in 8 months. And in boxing, 
Deepak Kumar wins silver in the 52 kg category at Sranya Memorial Tournament in Bulgaria. For details of these stories and more log on to our website www.newsonair.com and newsonair app. And with that we end the morning news.